Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, we got with me the man with the plan, BQ. Say what's up to the people. Yo, what up, everybody? We were gone for a little bit, so sorry about that. I th- It was my bad because I didn't say something a week before, but I went on vacation. Um, I take several vacations throughout the year, so my bad. But um, big, big stepper over here. Big it stepper. is. It's, it's, it's not my last one this year, but uh, we were in Las Vegas for the weekend, me and my old lady, so we weren't able to record uh and we you know we got we didn't want to do the solo thing with tw and then we were gonna try a different show just didn't work so uh we're back up in the place to be right now um but yeah we were in vegas we went to the uh lovers and friends tour out there or not tour but like a festival like it was like a uh like a three stage all the r&b groups from the 90s and early 2000s some hip-hop too so like uh usher was there Ludacris. Timberland, oh, uh, man. Lil, Lil Kim, SWV, that Mace. That's crazy. Um, yeah, you could. There's Whoa. no way to see everyone, dude. Bro, Lauren Hill was there, yeah, and we thought yeah. we were at her stage because uh-huh. she was supposed to be the closer. Yeah, and then yeah. like Usher did his set, and then all of a sudden it was over. Like, and we we're like, "Whoa, what happened to Lauren Hill?" And then like, <laughs> "Oh, she performed at a different stage." We're like, no, you were disappointed that Usher was the closer. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but it was like with Lauren Hill, it's like, yo, you may never get this opportunity again, you know? Right. So exactly. I don't have even. I, I don't even know that we have proof that she's alive. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So um, everybody, oh, man. everybody there. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I just listed like five, six people, man. It's, it. it I mean, what there was, was a your, good, like, uh, what was what was the best part? What was the best part? Dude, we liked Mace actually. Yeah. <laughs> this nice. show is real good. Um, Lil Kim needs the be done really wow yeah yeah oh yeah oh, dude man but yeah it's, you know what was crazy about Lil kim is like Lil kim to me and you you're you're a rapper so you can you can tell me what you think about this i think Lil kim is one of the most underrated rappers like in the history of rap like don't get me wrong since she stopped rapping she's fell way off but like in her albums where you could say she was like an active rapper like dog find me a bad little kim verse like find me a verse where Lil kim was like yo that shit is whack like, yeah, I, I, yeah, dog, Little Kim, she made some of the hardest songs about being a hoe that you ever heard. Oh, like, yeah, dude. I was like, dog, you know what I mean? Like, dog, Little Kim, dog, like, underrated, so underrated. Like, if you listen, if you respect, like, the lyricism and the bars, like, Little Kim, son, Little Kim. Yeah, ever since she kind of, like, stopped, and you can even throw Foxy Brown in that conversation, honestly, there's never been another, another couple female to come in and take their place they might say oh and nikki minaj cardi b and like fuck no like they're not even well nikki so so nikki nikki minaj right just like at, just as a talent in terms of like the way she can switch up her flow you know what i mean like the, the the weird stuff she does like very to me very talented very good and then like remy ma remember the um yeah yeah remy ma remix too. like bro like remy ma but then when she came out with her album she was the album was ass. in this room you know what i mean yeah, like, that shit it, it's, the, it's the label pressure the label pressure gets to you you know what i mean they're like yeah. oh dog we need a uh we need we need you to do a song with neo and you're like do i really i want to i want to rob somebody on this record and so you know yeah, but I, I like the neo song but i bought that cd in iraq dude like that's where the it yeah. came out and i was like oh shit and i put that shit in i'm sitting here Stone face. <laughs> like, like this, this ain't what I'm looking for. <laughs> <idiot. laughs> like this ain't what I need to go do what I gotta do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, man. Right, right, right. Oh my god. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Uh, you mentioned Mace was the best part. Yo, Mace was my favorite rapper until until my boy, my boy Jermaine, rest in peace, passed me a tape. It was a clear tape that had the colorful wheel on the inside. It was a dub of in my lifetime volume one by Jay-Z changed yeah. my life. Oh my Jay-Z. God, bro. Like that was Mace was my favorite rapper until I until I got a got got my first Jay-Z tape. And it was a rap. It was a rap. What's funny is he performed uh Mo Money Mo Problems and then Lil' Kim like two sets later. Yeah. Started doing it too. Really the same shit, rapping Biggie's verse, you know, and everyone's just standing there like we heard this already. It was like it was like 
bring it on you seen that movie like the yeah, cheerleader yeah, yeah, movie yeah, dude yeah. when when, when, uh, when the, the, they did the same routine <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man oh my god that's what get ready for total annihilation <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh man! All right, oh, all right, all right. So I promise yeah. y'all, y'all came here. Y'all didn't come here for uh for a, a trip in the wayback machine. But um, we promised y'all some great wrestling talk, and we gonna give it to you. Um, but before we do that, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button so that everybody knows that you like this video. Um, hit the subscribe button so you are subscribed to this channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page um real quick before we get into business i have two really good seats to slamversary really good i mean like second row dead in front of the hard camera um like really good seats and i am going to be raffling them off so if you would like a chance to win some great seats and the reason why i'm raffling them off is because Impact put the seats up on Eventbrite, so I can't resell them on Ticketmaster. I don't know why that why that's like that, but uh, yeah, I, I don't don't ask me. Yeah. But um, yeah. So um, so anyway, I'm uh, so I'll be raffling those off. If you would like a chance to win some phenomenal seats to Slam Anniversary, hit me up at TW Talking About or at Talking About Pod. Let me know you'd be interested in entering the raffle. Um, it's a chance to win some great seats for a really, really cheap price. All right. Um, so BQ, tell me, tell me what outside of this show in the world of impact wrestling has caught your interest this week. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you what's on my mind. I put this tweet out a couple days ago. Right now, impact wrestling is the only company publicly on social media and, and in the media in general, the dirt sheets, all that. They're the only company without any publicized drama. Mm. Now maybe there's something on, going on backstage. Did they wish have, Rachel Ellering happy birthday yet? Yeah, there, there, there we go. Uh, we didn't wish, wish her happy anniversary with eight month anniversary with her boyfriend. No. Um, but there's no, there's no drama. Like the closest thing is, basically Kimberly saying that she's still part of impact wrestling. Mm. I can promise you, she's not going to be back on that show. Um, <laughs> so uh, if you think about like new Japan's got their drama going on right now, uh, I don't keep, I, I mean, I'm kind of aware of it. I just don't care about their product. Uh, AEW has the drama with MJF and, and you know, some reminiscence still of the Cody stuff is floating around all that, but or remnants, I would say, um, what other companies we got? Uh, WWE, obviously, the stuff with Sasha Banks and uh, Naomi. Um, wait, what happened? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me fill you in. Yo, even my dad heard about it, dude. Like, he wow. sent me to, you know, I mean, it's, wow. and my dad don't watch no wrestling, you know so what I mean? How, how does that tell me what that's, tell me what, what that conversation is like? Somebody's like, yo, just like, how, how tell, tell me how this goes. How well, my that, dad how, just kind of hit me up. He sends me his links. Like, do you hear about the, you know, these wrestlers that yeah, walked yeah. out and everything? But it's like, just for the link to come across him, and he's, you know, 66 years old or whatever. Right, 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 right. You right. know what I mean? Um, he watched wrestling with me when we were young. You know, he liked watching Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, all that shit. But it's like, right. Yeah, it's it, it just wild when. You know, I, I remember I said um, months ago, my dad spoiled spoiled the Royal Rumble for me. Right. I, was, I actually watched it, but I didn't watch the last match because I had to go to bed. And then I wake That's up funny. three in the morning. And my dad's like, oh, Brock Lesnar won the Royal Rumble. I was like, oh, my God. Of all the... <laughs> so, um, but, the, you know, there's not that drama. Um, you, you can't really throw Ring of Honor in there. Ring of Honor is kind of weird right now. They got some weird thing going really on with the logos right and stuff. It's not even really fair to call. Yeah, it's not a thing. thing. Yeah. But um, in NWA, I mean, then I don't know really know what's going. On. I only watch their pay per views now because I can't sit through the show. Uh, yeah. And then MLW's always got shit going on. But Impact's like clean right now, you know, it, which is wild because they were the company that's always like, yo, it's always something with these guys. Mm -hmm. Always something. Always someone complaining. Always, you know, 
or f uh, people who don't watch the product finding a reason to like make fun of what they're doing or something like they, they right. can't do that right now. It's always the headline. So and so done with impact. Right, right. <laughs> so, yo, know, clickbait is so funny, man. I saw this article the other day that said um, WWE legend um, says Vince McMahon is, you know, some negative thing about Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. uh, I click on it, <laughs> and the WWE legend is Vince Russo. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dying dying laughing when i read that i was like yo that's the most clickbaiting ish shit i've seen in a while right legend <laughs> but but in all honesty man i mean this is it, it's good it, it's a it's a good step in the right direction you know every, every positive step forward is a good thing for the company so it's just good that uh and, and people are even seeing it though that i mean I, I didn't even come to that realization myself it was really uh, seeing a lot of social media chatter, not from the normal Impact fans, but just wrestling fans in general. It's like, yo, Impact, Impact's just sitting there, you know, popping popcorn, watching right, all right. this shit burn in front of them, you know? So they're establishing themselves right now as like the positive company to, you know, come work for, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I would agree. I would agree. I think that um, Impact seems like the least volatile place, right? Like, I think we've seen a lot of people get out of WWE and think they're running to safer ground with AEW only to go there and completely like disappear. You know what I mean? And it's like, that makes AEW sound more volatile. And like, you know, there's other things, controversies involving AEW and their management and you know, it is what it is. And so like, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I think, um, impact does feel like if you're somebody who was looking for a stability god that sounds weird to say but if you're looking for you know <laughs> some sort of like stability it seems like impact might be the place you want to go right if you go make a good impression like it seems like a place you could get on and work in a relatively drama free environment i think that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty good observation bq yeah i mean that that's a good pitch to make right now um because it's obviously a difficult time for them right now. It's a bad time to be a free agent in wrestling, but they have struggled clearly to really reel in the free agents that they've wanted a lot of the times because AEW is like the promised land. They sign the guys that AEW says no to. That's basically how, it, how it's worked out, you know? So, but this is an opportunity for them to start pitching. Hey, we're, we're, a, we got the most positive stress free work environment going right now. You know, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's interesting. And I, what I'd be interested to know is if you're a wrestler, like where does something like that factor in on your list? You know, like where, mm -hmm. where does um, where does like. I don't even know how you would describe that. Like, would you call that like, would you call that like morale? Like, I mean, wh how, but whatever you would call it, like, I wonder how something like that factors into most wrestlers decision making when they're looking for a place to wrestle i think a lot of times if you're looking for a place to wrestle the your most important thing is like you know who's going to pay me the most right mm -hmm. um so once you figure out who's going to pay you the most that's going to be your top choice and i would mm -hmm. think AEW is the place that's going to pay the most right yeah a so lot of that's probably why why they would you know choose AEW first but like i don't know man i just i don't know <sighs> I could be wrong about this. And if anybody in, in here in the chat is a, is an AEW fan, like, let me know. But AEW seems like a tough place to get over. It seems like with AEW, either you're a favorite or you're not. And like, I don't know that a lot of people are like going to AEW and like getting over quote unquote, you know, like hook was a thing. Hook became a meme and that's just taken off. But I don't know that people are like working their way up and winning the fans over at AEW. Yeah, I mean, you see, there was the the recent rise of like Wheeler Yuta, and I, I've always liked him, so I was really excited about that. Um, and it was like they, it just cooled off because, not because they, they didn't. I mean, he's prominently featured, but they have so many other people to focus on and so much going on. Like, it's just but it it's just cooling off unless yeah. you're one of the top 
four or five dudes that they focus on, you're you're going to cool off over there. Like, there's just no way around it. There's too much going on. Yeah. Um, and there's certain guys who are going to be on, like CM Punk. Like, they're going to have him on the episode. He's yeah. probably going to kick off the show with his music. Uh, so you that's that's TV time that's not going to be ever available for you is the CM Punk segments. Right. So you know, unless you're one of those big dudes, like it, it's it's difficult. And what I right now, so my favorite time in AEW was the beginning. I I actually liked seeing all these independent guys who I was semi familiar with, but never really had an opportunity to be on TV, like be on TV all of a sudden. You know, I, I thought that yeah, was dude. that was cool. And now it's becoming, um, and and it, well, what I was saying back then is like, man, Impact's gonna have a real bitch of a time signing these independent talents now because that's who they're snatching up. Now they are basically stepping into that role that WCW was that TNA was doing, where they were just signing the people who come from T, um, WWE. And even even Impact's not doing that now because that's been the big marketing strategy behind Slammiversary every year. Now they're not even pretending like that's a thing. Yeah, uh, I'm sure well, some people I, I are going to show up. I'm glad to see them get away from that. They did it the first year and it was a lot of fun. It created a lot of buzz. I was happy to see a lot of people talking about Impact who normally would not be talking about Impact. And um, then the second year, it really fell flat to me. It really fell yeah. flat to me. It felt like a lot of people trying to promise things. Uh, I mean, it felt like it felt like a bunch of, you know, kind of like expectations that were unwarranted. Uh, that's what the second the second year of doing that who's going to show up thing felt like. And um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I just I get back to doing your own shit. Like that's 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 to me like um, I remember when it was one of the pay-per-views and Willie Mack came out dressed like Razor Ramon and, and dog. Oh, I think he was the, he was the, um, the, uh, the X division champion at the time. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's when he won it. I could oh, be okay. wrong. It was in that ballpark though. Yeah. yeah. It was either when he won or when he lost it. But, um, but like, I, I don't know, man. It's just like, do your own stuff. Like to me, like, how can I be excited about your character if you're portraying another character? You know what I mean? Like if you're just if you're just honoring a character you feel is greater than you, then how am I supposed to feel that you're great? Why should I care about you and what you're doing? Yeah, and we'll, we'll turn this into the Willie Mac podcast for a sec. That that's why I've always liked I, I do like him, but he would go out there, he'd do the stunner. To do the the frog splash, I'm like, where? Why aren't you doing your own? Where? Where's your moves? You know what right. I mean? That's yes. why. That's why I've been pointing out lately the, you know, everyone using the same finishers and all that. Um, I mean, even when Mia Yim and Sammy Callahan showed up at the pay per view, they turned off the the lights for both of them. Mm-hmm. Mia Yim teases the pile driver, doesn't hit it. Sammy Callahan hits the pile driver. They had the same damn finisher pretty much. Mm. So. I just don't, I, you know, I don't know. I'm getting into a tangent there about that, but yeah, just want to see people. My, my cat does this at the beginning of every episode. Like at one point <laughs> he'll calm down, but at the beginning he's like, I'm going to piss this fool off. I'm going to make as much noise as humanly possible. Why don't we give Spooky a segment and yeah, just be like, Spooky, uh, what do you think about what they're doing with Violet by Design? Do you think they could use them better? You know, <laughs> spooky, who should be the number one contender for Josh Alexander? Um, spooky, what do you think of the undead realm? I feel like you would fit in good with uh Rosemary and Decay. Um, he, we need to get more spooky in the show. Spooky was pointing out to me about Violent by Design just yesterday. We were talking about this. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like Violent by Design, despite being two time tag team champions and Eric Young? being in the main event slam version, don't they feel like they're in the same exact place on the car that they always have been? I mean, do you feel like they're, they, they've been elevated from, despite having multiple title runs, I don't feel like they are any different than when they debuted as a team. I, you know what? I don't know. I think that this latest tag team title run kind of reestablishes them as more of a big deal. I think like, there was this influx of like ROH talent and, you know, and, you know, and, 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 um, uh, was his good brothers, uh, bullet club, all these guys. And 
to have Violent by Design come out on top of all those dudes, to me, that made them feel like more of a big deal. And then with Eric Young um, getting the main event at Slammiversary, like, I feel like that does kind of establish them as like, hey, we're a prominent group. Yeah, it does. But I, I mean, I guess I was thinking it when they were wrestling the Briscoes in the main event, which obviously we'll talk about in a little bit. I was just like, I don't feel like they're equals in any any way. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like Violent by Dad's Zion's going to lose this match. They're not going back to like main eventing another episode anytime soon. That That's just kind of, you know. But see, I, I think to me, that's a miss, right? That's a miss because you've already established them as, hey, they're a big deal here, right? Like you've established them as, hey, they're a big deal here because they're multiple time tag team champions. The leader of their group is in the main event of Slammiversary. Like they're established. So you don't have to put the titles back on them, but like, don't let them fade back into the background. They should keep beating people and they should keep being a formidable team. Right? Like, yeah, I, like I, to me, cause, it, cause I think if you look up in three months and Violent by Design hasn't done anything fun or interesting or compelling, then you're like, ew, they had the titles, right? But if you look up yeah. three, three months from now and they've been killing people, you could be like, well, Violent by Design had the titles. They were the champions. They were a good champion. You know what I mean? Like, it affects the way you're going to look at it retrospectively. Uh, or is that the right word? We, in, in hindsight or whatever, when you look back on it, if they've been doing strong stuff um, since they had the titles, then you'll look more fondly on the time they had the titles. I think they need a chick. Same thing I said about OBE after a while, like freshen it up. Eric Young, we'll get into his promo later, but Eric Young's violent by design promos are always like the same exact thing. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, oh, what a promo. He's a good promo. Don't get me wrong. But see, I don't know that that sameness to promos is necessarily a bad thing. Because, like, think about it. Like, people want to, like, they want to, like, chant along. And, like, if Impact was play, So, for example, if he was doing this same thing in WWE, when he gets to, this world doesn't belong to you, <laughs> everybody would be saying it along with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so, so I, I, don't, I don't know if that's necessarily, like, a bad thing, the, the sameness of it. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think that, like, you know, I don't think they're like earth shatteringly amazing, right? Like I'm not going to stop what I'm doing because I heard violent by design is coming on, but I think they have, you know, they got dudes who don't look like, uh, like, like, like cosplaying wrestlers. You know what I mean? Like they, um, they, they I, I think they're credible threats. And again, they got multiple, a uh, multiple tag team championship reigns. So I don't know. I would say they're pretty established as like a, as like a quality team. A Fair quality enough. Act. We'll see. I think they feel exactly the same, but um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, turning us into the violent by design podcast now. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I wanted to talk about here, real quick, we're gonna get into the episode. Obviously, uh, on this episode, they're. You know, they're going to, as you just said, you're glad with Slammiversary. They're not going to, you know, start teasing. Who's going to show up? Who are we signing? And then it's, you know, uh, the the other guy from Heavy Machinery. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, we don't have to worry about getting, like, that kind of crap this year. I don't yeah. think. But they're they're <laughs> leaning into Impact 20. <laughs> Tucker. <it>. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what's Tucker doing in the impact zone? So I'm gonna kill. Stop it. Um, it's a dream match anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, anywhere. So he's got to come and win the X division title on his first night. Yeah, but so they're they're clearly gonna lean into the TNA history here, mm -hmm. uh, which makes sense. It's Impact Twenty. The little commercial that they with Josh Alexander looking into the chest and all that, like I thought that was really cool. I thought it was mm -hmm. yep, I agree. very well done. Uh, but my first thought was, I think this would have all hit a lot harder if they didn't lean on the TNA stuff so often and so frequently throughout the year. You know, if, 
when you're showing Gail Kim winning the knockout championship for the first time and Ken Shamrock and all that, if we hadn't seen that like 10 times throughout the year already on different clips, like it, it to me, it would hit a lot harder. Now it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't take away. It's still cool. But I just think when Slammiversary comes around and it's the anniversary, I think that makes sense to like lean into TNA every year because it seems like it's TNA all year. Uh, they haven't done the flashback moments in a while, except they did it this episode. And uh, I'll get into that a little bit more later, what I noticed with the flashback, or what I, what I took from it. But I don't know. What do you think about that? It, it, is, you know, is it that big of a deal, or am I just being BQ, finding something negative? To... Um, yes, negative, negative BQ. You should change that to your handle on all social media. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no, I listen. I, I I I agree with you. I think like the um, the TNA going back to TNA for Slam anniversaries is, in my opinion, the perfect use use usage of it. Right? Like I've said several times, I think TNA is the most damaged brand name in the history of all entertainment. And, um, and, and, and so like this whole, this, this whole thing about like, you, you hear so often that the chatter among, you know, impact groups is, oh, they should bring back the TNA name permanently. They should rebrand to TNA, bring back the six sided ring and all of that stuff. Yeah. And like, I'm not bring saying back Mike like, today. Yeah. right. right. I'm, I'm not saying that that's like necessarily, if they want to do it, then do it fine. But I'm also like, why are we pining for that dude like that's 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 the past that's the past and it's okay to celebrate the past like if you want to do like a throwback a throwback episode or again make slam anniversary the throwback day right slam anniversary is there's anniversary tied into it hell for slam anniversary every year bring back the six-sided ring the tna branding all of it you know what i mean like make it a tna nostalgia day bring back tna legends cool but I do agree with you that it feels less special because they lean on the TNA brand so much. We shouldn't hear about it except for when you're doing something like this. For when you're doing like a special TNA branded show, do that, that's fine. Other than that, like we, sh I, you know, like I, again, so, you know, somebody on <laughs> social media was telling me, you know, I'm being negative. Because I was saying how, you know, Impact needs to do better with their digital media strategy. Bruh, all the most of what they do on Impact, they post they post match graphics and they post uh, when somebody who used to wrestle in, in TNA does something in AEW or WWE, they post old matches of them from being in TNA. Like, that's the majority of their social media strategy. So we see that TNA content often. And it just doesn't feel special. Like it, it, it doesn't feel like you're breaking it out for any great special reason. So yeah, man, I don't know. I, I think that like, I love the idea of, of bringing it back to nostalgia. I was um, in a chat the other day and I was asking people like, Hey, you know, if you were going to show people the reasons why you love, you know, impact, you know, what would you show them? And for me, one of the things I said is like, I remember when I first started watching impact, I used to watch, the beautiful people. I used to love their act. I just thought it was like, I just thought it was a lot of fun. It was like, you know, it was really sexy, but I, it was like, it was like fun in like a weirdly suggestive way. It was entertaining. Like I really enjoyed that. That was one of the things about the show that I really liked every week. And, um, you know, there were a lot of little things, right. That, that, that I enjoyed about like the, the TNA show. Um, you know, like I liked how they had Christian Cage and and uh, and Tom Cole and AJ Styles was it were his goons, and like it was it was it was fun. It was different. There was a lot of stuff to like about it, but for the fan today, right? And this is what I, I think I was saying this to you before we started. There's a 15 year old wrestling fan, a 16 year old wrestling fan who was seven or eight years old when spike tv canceled tna right so they don't know about the lol tna days they don't know they weren't like on the internet like you know browsing wrestling conversations during those times they just know that impact is something that's like you know not held in high regard now 
if you're Scott Demore, how are you selling to them? Stop trying to sell to me. Stop trying to sell to me. You know what I mean? I'm I'm here. I've been watching since whatever, like 07, 08, whatever it was. And like, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I buy the pay-per-views every month or, or, or whenever you, you have them, like I'm here. Stop. You, you don't have to keep just selling to me. What are you doing to keep the company alive in the future? You know what I mean? Like, what are you selling to the new fan? And that's why I, I don't have a problem with the TNA branding, but everything should be about something new. Everything mm -hmm. should be about something going forward. And that's the thing that I wonder when you lean on the TNA stuff so much is like, what are we doing for the, the, the future of the brand of the company going forward? And I said something last week, but I was, I was really not last week, but two weeks ago and I was super tired. So I, I listened back and I was not well-spoken at all. Uh, you know, I, I made a comment and just like really clarify it. The way to expand an audience, whether it's a TV show you're building a social media page, you're selling toothpaste. The only way to expand the audience is to create contact content for your target customer. You, you, and that's why I kind of brought up, you can't play a Brandy Rhodes match and hope that someone's going to sign up and watch a Deanna Perrazzo match. That way of thinking 100% doesn't work. I know some people think, oh, it could, no, it doesn't. There, there's only one, real proven method to expanding an audience it's it's to create content for your target viewer not your current audience that's what i wanted to to, to clear up like we're we're gonna watch where are we gonna watch but how if you say okay we want to make this person who's not watching a company a fan of the company now how do you have to create content that that person's gonna want to be a part of and want to look into that's that's the only way you can grow anything else is a waste of time you know so um i don't know we'll see i've, I've been saying that for a while you know especially when they were leaning into dreamer and rhino and you know bringing sandman on and doing all this ecw shit and ecw was around for what like four years five years i mean it's a, a blip note i mean that's not even a word a footnote <laughs> in, in wrestling honestly like it wasn't that they 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 played up that it was a really big deal because it was on the wwe invasion stuff but like it really wasn't right. you know um you know so you know we we say that a lot we we've been actually been in one way shape or form this conversation we're having right now we've been having for months about that that fan out there who doesn't know all the negativity and all that stuff they just know as you said it, it, that's just a smaller company but we're, you know they're leaning into the tna stuff this is something that i kind of i, I kind of noticed when they were playing the chris saban match i don't know what their obsession is with chris saban right now but um they're <laughs> playing that chris saban match and what what i kind of took away from it because as you said before he went on like it looks so much better than than right now obviously the energy in the company i think is what was really really different from tna compared to now because we talk about establishing an identity back then tna was like hey we're bringing people on who want to make a real splash they want to make a noise they want to create an alternative much like AEW did in the beginning we want to create an alternative we want to be part of something special we want to be part of the growth and part of something new now it's people are coming here because it's a job you know clearly there's sammy callahan there's moose who guys are like yo we're gonna wave this flag we want to we want to do something special here there are some guys like that but then you you know you bring on the good brothers and deanna prazos i think she's in that category too like she's clearly all in on on impact but then you bring in the good brothers and you um you know br bring in some somebody dudes like that they're just it's just a paycheck it's not they're not like hey we're here to leave impact better than when we found it right you know so i think that's a lot of the difference in the talent that they're they were signing back then compared to now and that's where you got to create a culture uh if you think about like in the nba I saw this this meme that was like, you know, the Miami Heat, 
almost never pick in the lottery. They never even have that much, you know, a lot of the times they don't have a lot of cap space, whatever. They are hardly ever bad. They've won multiple championships and then that team retired or broke up and then it like rebuild very quickly mm-hmm. and they're good again. And like now they're like probably, you know, probably going to the NBA finals this year. You know what I mean? They have a different version of the heat that seemed to go. There was a Shaq and Wade and then there's the the LeBron and, and Bosch and Wade. And now it's the Jimmy Butler. Like they go through different eras and they're still relevant. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, what the meme was pointing out the Orlando magic who, play six hours away same state you know no no state tax all this shit and they're horrible every year and they pick at the top of the draft every year they got the first pick this year and they're horrible every year every year and free agents they come to the heat because there's a culture established they come to the orlando magic because they it's a basketball team to play for that's going to pay them a lot of money right you know what i mean so uh there, there's just you, so you just have to establish that culture again to where hey, you come to impact like let's do something special. You know, you, there's a certain energy that the wrestlers need to have when they join. Like you're not just here because you need a place to work. We're gonna give you a paycheck. You're happy to be here, and then you're gonna leave in six months. And you know, you you, you got to find that hungry player. The Heat. I mean, to go back to my basketball reference, what are they famous for? for finding players who were undrafted and in the G league right. for plucking them out. And they're immediate, not immediate, but they eventually become huge contributors to the team. Right. So where, you know, again, I'll use Orlando magic with teams like the Sacramento Kings guys like this picking at the top of the draft and their players are not better than the ones that Miami's plucking out of obscurity Yep. because they haven't, they have an eye for, um, People who want, who they just have an eye for talent. And Impact has to find that eye for talent too. Yeah. To find that next AJ and those guys that, you know, that are out there that are raw that you can like. See, truly, I, I think truly they spell. do have. I think they do have uh, an eye for talent. Like I think they, I think they actually do get good, good. Uh, I was gonna say good players. They they get good talent. I think, but I don't know, man. I think it's the presentation, dog. I think that I think that when you look at impact, like does impact feel like something that people can relate to? Like as much as I think the young bucks are corny as hell, like oh. people look at them and feel relatable to them. You know what I mean? Like people look at the young bucks and Adam Cole, and I think they see themselves in those guys in some way. You know what I mean? And I think that's what makes them like, again, as corny as those dudes are like, people embrace that corniness because they're like, yeah, I'm a dork too, but I also like sneakers. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, so, uh, so like, these are my guys. So it's like, so, so how many characters does impact put on TV that people really are going to look at and have some sort of like relatability to it? Like, I, I think that's a huge part of putting good characters on TV. Like think of like the way that ECW felt, right? Like, just just that feel of like the intimate setting and you see like Tommy Dreamer standing there and then he has like Beulah next to him and you know what I mean like it was like again even if you you may not necessarily like see yourself in like Tommy Dreamer per se but you're like once you hear his character like okay this guy's like an underdog and he's fighting over this girl and he's got this guy who's just like kicking his ass and he really just wants to you know like like vanquish his rival like how much of what we see on impact is something that people feel like, remember when I was talking about the, the moose Josh Alexander story. And I was like, dog, no, he went to his house and he, and he touched his kid. I was like, you got, you got to kill him. Like impact does some good storytelling. Like, you know what I mean? got to give these guys credit for when they do some good storytelling, but I don't know if they have a whole lot of characters that people are like, yo, like I, I, I see myself in those characters I think, or, or I want to be like those characters. Like those are the cool kids, like, um, like the NWO, right? People wanted to be those dudes. They thought they were the coolest thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, my God, dudes today, right? That's the whole basis for the bullet club is we're going to copy off the NWO. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, so like, you know, 
what is it about the feel of impact that makes people like want to um, be a part of it? You know what I mean? Like, again, think about like the NXT black and gold, right? Like they were just, because they had that that wild environment with the with the ridiculous chants and all of that stuff, like people looked at that and was like, "Yo, I want to be a part of that. I want to go to the shout to the to the show and just yeah. chant random things and yell fight forever and you know play with a beach ball during a match, like whatever it was. Like that was the whole vibe. And like I don't know that Impact gives off any type of vibe that makes people be like they. I mean, again, if you're the type of fan who's like, "Yo, I want to sit and watch the show." and enjoy the storytelling like me then you know what i mean then, then you can get what impact you can enjoy it but like i can't necessarily say that i watch the impact shows and think to myself like man i bet that is a blast to go watch you know what i mean right like, you know I, I i definitely um i buy tickets to impact shows you know what i mean i haven't gone to one in a while but like i think like um i think it would be fun to go but but not in the same way where it would be fun to go to a WWE show where it's like, you're going to get this whole experience and you're going to see people you think are big stars and, and all of that stuff. So, um, so yeah, man, I think that like, you know, there's, there's a lot impact can do to get better in that area. I think they're doing a better job of highlighting the crowd. Um, I showing people having fun. We've been talking about that. I would cut down on showing people booing because that looks fake. Um, and it's not that they're being fake, but, but, we we don't really boo people in, in, in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't see someone you like on the street and you're like boo thumbs down. That's not true. Yeah. If I saw Deanna Perrazzo in real life, I'd be like, boo. Yeah, but she's a wrestler, but you don't walk at work, you don't go to work and see someone you don't like and start giving them the thumbs down. Like <laughs> that's that's just like that's fake now. I mean it's not fake, but it's 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 like Screw show you, Chad, boo. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's showy though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you, you show people having fun absolutely because that's very very genuine but then when they start you know someone's cutting a promo and they're like boo like that looks like super cheesy no other company does that really so you, you sh- yeah they show people having fun or people like legitimately offended but not yeah, like dude. you know I'm, okay, I'm I'm totally okay with that you know why because it's wrestling and like even though you're right like in real life we don't go screw you chad you know what I mean? like, <laughs> to the guy you don't like at your job go home like, I, 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 right 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 nobody likes you <laughs> i know you drank my soda you bitch <laughs> <laughs> like, no like like yes that's not like a real conversation you have but see stuff like that that's what i would call like showing the fun fan experience right like because when when, when i go to a show i'm hokey i'm hokey fan all the way you know what I mean? I am like, you know what I mean? Like, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm all of that because to me, that's part of the being playing into the show, making the show more fun. You know what I mean? Like, and so, so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Fair enough. I'm all about like, yo, let's show the people at home, like, you know, what they should be expecting to do when they come to the show and impact needs more people who are booing and cheering and you know whatever saying screw you Deanna Perrazzo <laughs> <laughs> but but they're they're doing a better job of showing the fan experience like we've been asking yeah. them to do that and yeah. they have I was watching I thought about impact today because I was watching the um my WNBA team is the fever and I uh, I watch them on Facebook that's where the, they stream a lot of the games and in between timeouts they play the same three or four commercials every single time out every single game and the people in the comments are like oh my fucking god like losing their minds and it made me think of like we own the night and and all this shit that they do where it's just like the same stuff over and over and over oh my god. um so it, ju- it just made me think of that and also i thought of them because we have a championship from 2012 and today was like celebrating that championship so they brought the team who won the title and they were there at halftime and like the fever suck. They're like really, really bad. Bottom <laughs> of the league in attendance and shit like that. Oh, so this, you know, th- more people showed up to the game for this. You know, it wasn't a, a sellout or nothing. But people also in the comments on Facebook were like, oh, my God, we are living in 2012. Like they they are still – I mean, it was a special day, but the team brings up this championship a lot. Like, hey, remember we won a championship? But like 
we're perennially bad, horrible team. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, just continue. Oh, yeah, but remember that time we won a championship? It's, um, <laughs> and people are like, stop talking about the championship. Like, what about the team now? Like, people get yeah. so mad, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so it made me think about it. And it made me think of Impact, too, because right now, uh, the Fever's attendance is, I mean, they average like 4,000 fans, 5,000 in the stands. Um, they got like an extra couple thousand today. But when they were showing the clips from the championship season, I mean, it was like sold out, standing room only arena. Wow. And and that's almost what I felt. It's like, we're watching impact. And I mean, there's a lot more people there now. Don't get me wrong, but because of the way they film, it looks like there's 20 people there. And then they <laughs> said, Oh, here's, you know, this TNA stuff. And you just see all these people, you know, falling over each other. Yeah. 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 It, but it, even that, a lot of that was like, cause of the way it was shot. Right. Like, but also again, if yeah. you're going back to like, the early days or like when they first, you know, got on Spike TV, like those crowd, that was a lot more fun, man. They put a lot more production value into those shows. They lit the crowd better. The people were more excited. They were doing more fun stuff. So like, yes, like it looks like it was a more fun, better product back then. And this goes back to what you were saying before, right? Like you gotta be careful about leaning in on the TNA stuff too much because people are gonna be like, well, I kind of want that instead of this. Why can't we have that? You know. Yeah. Like I, I've I've always said, imagine if WWE was playing uh, S- Steamboat versus Macho Man like every three <laughs> yeah. months, like showing clips, or Hogan slamming Andre, you know, every other week. Like people are like, "Yo, that shit was better than what you're doing right now." Like, <laughs> you know, there's a reason you do that tastefully, you right. know. Um, yeah, lean into the history and all that. And so I wanted to bring this up too, and then we're gonna get into this episode. Uh, I brought this up on Twitter. Twitter had a pretty good conversation. And we're talking about branding and all that shit all the time. So this particular... No, it's not this particular. I don't think it's this set of... I never know what the tapings anymore. But they were promoting the Citrus Brawl. They so, you know, get your tickets. or showing you the matches ahead of time and all that shit. They put out these graphics and they're very well done. You know, they did the the Bayou one and the, the Mayday and all this shit. Like, they've got their own style of graphic when they're selling tickets and then all of a sudden the ticket sales are over the tapings happen and they go right back to the same like tired graphics that they've been using for the last several years that they haven't switched up at all and then there's no theme to the show (laughs) um you know i just feel like I don't understand why they don't lean into the themes. Like it's like the theme they come up, they make the, the the time to come up with these cool names, which is, which is good for the promotion of the show. Cause you're trying to connect with the audience who lives there. You know, it's citrus brawl and you got a Florida style graphic. You're, you're doing a great job with that, but I just don't understand why it, it th- those graphics don't make their way onto the episode or onto social media after. And it's almost like you're, you know, like AEW does Beach Break. It's just a yeah. fucking episode of Dynamite. But, you know, they brand it as a special television event. Yeah. Um, it looks a little different. And people, you know, good marketing will give you the same exact product. Mm-hmm. Um, but it looks different. So you think you're consuming something different. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, Snickers making a new wrapper that catches your eye. It's the same candy bar on the inside, but people... Oh, she's here's a new rapper. Let me buy this. Right. You know, so it's I don't understand nougat. why they don't lean in. What's that? So it's the nougat. Yeah, yeah, the nougat. Um, and I'm not saying change the ring ropes or nothing like that, but I just don't. I don't get that. I don't understand why the theme disappears and yeah. then it goes right back to feeling exactly the same. Yeah, I think it would be helpful too because it conditions the fans to know, hey, we're in a new place, we're in a new set of tapings. Yep. And fans usually get excited when the new set of taping start, you know? Yeah. Um, not so much now. Back <clears throat> back when they used to do like two months at a time, you, you couldn't yeah. wait for that new fucking loop to start. Right. Uh, now they happen quicker, but I just feel like that's a better way of marketing it to where it just, it breaks it up and it's fresh every month. You know what I mean? So I, I think, I, I agree with you. I think that's a problem across wrestling is the sameness from episode to episode. And I kind of hate it. You know what I mean? Like, I like when I see, um, like, I love old episodes of or old clips of like Monday Night Raw because they used to play the New Haven Coliseum 
And I, that like that was like right down the street from from where I lived at the time. And I, I used to love just like I could recognize the building. You know what I mean? Um, but like so much of every show, right? Every Monday Night Raw, every AEW Dynamite, every Impact looks exactly the same. I would love if, like you said, like no, where they're going, if if at least even for the first set of tapings, the first episode of of the set of tapings, if they were to have some branding that were specific to the advertising that they do, just to make it feel different. I would love if Impact would do some set changes. I would love that, man. Like, just switch it up a little bit. Like, go with the, uh, on, on maybe on one loop, go with no stage and, and like the Jumbotron just in the back. Or, you know, go with like, um, you know, <clears throat> I used to love on WCW Halloween Havoc how they would have like the set with like the big pumpkin in the middle and the guys would walk out from like behind the pumpkin. Like, I just, I love that man. Do something different. And I think like for WWE, I can understand a little more why they don't switch it up because their set has to cost millions of dollars. It's like a thousand foot, you know, led Tron that, that like the, the stage is also the led, like it's wild. But I'm like, if you're Impact, man, like, just switch it up. You can switch it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, maybe for, switch it up at least for for the Impact Plus specials and um, and the pay-per-views. Like, give me a different set. And, like, that is one thing that is probably a bigger ask than most of the stuff we ask because that does cost money. Like, I'm sure right. you've paid your money to rent your stage and rent your jumbotron and you're like okay boom that cost is fixed and we're good we got this we'll just go set up but i just think it would feel fun and it would feel different if there were different sets for at least big events you know what i mean like a different ring skirt you know like and and impact does they switch up the ring rope sometimes they do switch up the ring skirts from time to time but like, I don't know. I think a different stage set would just make it feel more fun. Give me give me a theme show now and then. I think that would actually feel uh, like a lot of fun. I think it would help with the, you know, with, 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 with the audience vibe. And again, another thing that I think is cyclical, I think you do that type of stuff. And I think it encourages more people to come and be like, oh, this is a Halloween show. Cool. We're going to, you know, we're going to get in full costume and just act wild because it's Halloween. So <laughs> I would love to see more switching up of the sets, see more of the 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 theme of the of the 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 loop, you know what I mean, in in the 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 shows. But when you're taping eight weeks of television at a time, they can't all be citrus brawl, you know what I mean? Like, damn, again, we've been citrus brawling for six weeks. <laughs> you know, you, like, you make a good point there, actually. Yeah, and that, that yeah. You don't want to have, you know, citrus problems. But is there a way to lean into it? I mean, they have the benefit of having that Jumbotron in the back where they could put anything that they want. Right. And it's the impact screensaver every time. True. So, I mean, you could just switch that up. That's a great point. No, see, that is a great, great, great point. That, man, bravo for you. Because you're right, right? Like, I, I was thinking of having, like, a whole different set. But you're right. Like, you have that 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 big uh stage and and that set you can just you can decorate that some type of way like you said like the citrus ball put up the citrus brawl like theme instead of just the impact thing you know what I mean? right like, right yeah I, I totally agree and by the way the venues that they play are not big enough where people need to be watching on the on the on the screen like everybody in 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 the area can see the ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't yeah. have to be playing the um you don't have to be playing the show on the Tron. Like you're not playing an area in, in an arena that's so big where people can't see. Everybody can see. So I mean, like, so they don't have to just do that. They could definitely do something more creative with that jumbotron during the show. Yeah, like, and even, you know, the the Gia Miller interviews, what's the point of the screen in the background? There's like three screens with just impact bouncing around all over the world. What is the, you know, you can put anything on there to just freshen up or change the lighting. It's it's the citrus bra, so instead of the red, make it yellow, make it orange, whatever. Like, I, I don't know, just freshen it up. There's so many little strategies used in, 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 in media that freshen shit up. Like, 
what did WWE start doing several years ago? I don't know if they still do it. They would uh, randomly they'd be like, oh, it's the season premiere, even though it's episodic, right? Uh, runs through you know the entire year. There's no off season. They'll have an episode. They're like, hey, next week is the season premiere. It's the same fucking shit that you've been watching. There's no different. No one's co- no no one's showing up. There's no surprises. But they condition you to think, well, this is different than the previous episode. So, you know, then people will tune in. So there's just there's those little things you can do. Um, We should get into this episode, though. Uh, I do want to point out that it was uh, the viewership was one hundred and nineteen K. It was down from one twenty five, but it's the first time it cracked the show buzz top one hundred, even though viewership was down. So, uh, you know, that that's a good thing. Uh, We we just we want to see we want to see viewership go up because we. (laughs) We pointed out before, like on Pop TV, they were doing three hundred thousand people yeah. on mm-hmm. average. Uh, at the time, people were like, "Oh, that's really low." Like, this is fucking low. Do we uh, know what does the most viewers on Access TV? They always say Impact does. By far, they say Impact by far. Yikes! Yeah, that's um, rough. <laughs> no, because I, 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 I was curious. Like, you know, <sighs> if Access TV has something else that's doing a lot of viewers, like. You know, Impact should be trying to co-promote with whatever that is that's doing that. But like, yikes, man! If I mean, like, it, not that one hundred nineteen thousand is bad. Like, I don't have anything that one hundred nineteen thousand people are consuming every week. Right, uh, right. So, so I mean, so, so I mean, like, it's it's not it's not terrible. But I mean, like, it, man, like, you know. It makes sense now, though, like having a network with more visibility, like just how that helps, because apparently it's just it's not a station that people watch for anything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, if you were if you were going, even if people were not that into Impact Wrestling, if Impact Wrestling was on TNT, they'd be doing 500,000 viewers at least. You know what I mean? They just would be because people are just watching TNT and people and right. TNT is on so many cable systems that. You know, as I remember Eric Bischoff went on a whole soliloquy about how people don't flip channels. That's bullshit. People flip channels and people would be flipping channels or flipping through their guide and see something called wrestling. And they would stop and take a look because people are interested in wrestling. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so like so if Impact Wrestling was on like a, a network with more exposure like that, like you know, they should try to find like what network has that much um, uh, distribution that they could possibly get back into more homes because like, it's just, again, like they got a good product right now, man. You know what I mean? I think, and so many people are talking about impact in more of a positive way right now. Now don't get me wrong. If WWE put Monday night raw on access TV, they would still do a million plus they would. Cause there's just more interest in it. You'd have more people calling up their cable system, demanding that, you put access TV in my package. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just, you know, it just, it would work better. But I mean, like for, in the case of impact, like they need to be in front of more eyes, man. They need to be where they can be found a, a little better. So, I mean, just cause you mentioned that I just had to say that since you mentioned like the viewership, like it just made me curious. Like if, if, um, you know, a lot of people like to try and draw the correlation of like, you know, impacts not doing, uh, great viewership, so impact's not good, and it's just not anybody who watches it will tell you it's just not the truth, right? And and unfortunately, you know, we do want to see even if it's one, two, three, four thousand, we do want to see it trend up, but these numbers are still low, and I, yeah, people consume differently. But I mean, YouTube insiders, you know, it's ten thousand people watching on there. It's not, it's not like there's another hundred thousand. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's, um, and obviously more people DB. We know. I DVR it. I, I don't ever watch it live. I say that all the time. So, um, you know, but that's still, that number is still like fucking low. Like I just brought up the WNBA earlier. Like they always say no one watches the WNBA. The WNBA national games have half a million people watching. You, you know, maybe that's not what other sports do, but that's, I mean, that's five times what Impact's doing. And they're, again, they're already see, saying, WNBA, well, they have a great product and they also have a great platform. Like they're on ESPN. Right. Like, don't they get games on like ABC? Right. Like just the, just by being in that family of networks, like you're going to get an opportunity to be put. So like so if you are um, um, I think USFL has been doing like uh, uh, over over a million. 
you yeah, know they've what been mean? doing well. And, and, they're, and they're spread between like two or three different networks. So, I mean, like, you know, people want content, man. People want content. You just got to put it somewhere where it's visible and you got to promote it, you know? Yeah. And that's why, you know, I've been talking a lot about the YouTube insider thing, ultimate insider. They don't let us know on the episode. I, I've been waiting for that episode to be like, Hey, this is what you pay for it. This is what you get. This is the value you receive. If you choose to do this, they ha I haven't seen them do that. You know, um, I haven't seen, uh, you know, that on, on Twitter or, or use YouTube itself and run specialized uh, little commercials, upload them and, and remind people like there's just not that. I think the ultimate insider is a great tool. I think it can be profitable for them. I'm glad I have it. It's, it, it's easier for me to watch than the impact plus app, which I despise. Once they came out with YouTube it was so much easier for me to watch it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we talk about that stuff so much, though, man, but they, they, they've got to improve how they get the word out about the insider because it's cheap. Anyone can afford it. I see people all the time on social media. How do I watch Impact? Like, yes. You know, but you know, though, but again, like, you know, to to Jeff Jarrett's credit, right? Like, that's yeah. one thing that he was really, really great about was getting out the word about impact, getting ahead of the news cycle, you know, all of that stuff. Like that's one thing you got to give Jeff Jarrett his credit for. Like he was, you know, he was, he was doing a great job of, of getting out in front of this stuff, you know? So, um, so like, so like, again, if you're impact, right? Like you said, like, you know, the, you know, that there's a running joke out there that nobody knows how to find the show that it's on a more and more obscure network every year. Like you understand that that's the, the, the joke that's out there about your product. It's up to you to change that. You know what I mean? Like it's up to you to change that. And like, if you think it's just gonna change by just putting on good shows, it's not, it's not. Like even AEW is not growing their audience. Like this idea that you are just gonna keep your audience happy and your show is going to grow that way. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You got to like blitz and go out of your way above and beyond. And as much as like WWE is annoying with their overly deliberate, deliberate overly deliberate, you know, messaging and marketing and, and they can be overbearing and all of that. Like people know who they are. People know what they are and they have successfully rebranded themselves as like a modern form of ent entertainment that's not for you know mouth breathers you know what i mean but that is through like a strong concerted effort right like stephanie mcmahon as as a chief branding officer went on like a media blitz and went to any and every big company and 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 did a pitch deck for wwe and for why it's a big global brand and their stars are stars and you know what I mean? And like all of that stuff, you know, like, so again, it's just, it's not like, like who's doing that for impact. You know what I mean? Who does impact have going out there? You know, like just, uh, I don't know if rehabbing is even the right word, but like actually building up their brand name, who do they have out there doing that? You know, so I, so I'm just saying, you know, you have to, you can't just sit around and hope that your audience is going to grow and that, you know, the good word is going to spread. It's because it's not, it's not, you got to actually push that narrative. And so I think if, if, if impact wants to, you know, grow the audience, um, you know, make more money, get on a better TV network, you know, a better streaming deal, all of that, you got to push the narrative, man. And just like you said, like they don't even push the YouTube insider. You know, like I, I just I just sat here and talked all that talk about getting on a, a, a bigger platform. What the hell is a bigger platform than YouTube? You know what I mean? They should be attacking that like crazy. You're on YouTube. Who doesn't have YouTube? Everybody <laughs> has YouTube, you know? So like, you know, I mean, the stuff that's on YouTube doing wild, crazy numbers, you know, like millions and millions and millions of views, there's no excuse. And we don't ever see them push or promote their YouTube insider on, 
on, on the show. So that's on them, though. You know what I mean? It ain't affecting my bottom line, but it's just right. <laughs> you know, it's something they could do better. It's just something they could do better. Yeah. Sorry clearly. to all that, everybody out there being negative. Me and negative BQ being negative. <laughs> yeah. But but um, as far as this episode goes, I thought the show was good. Um, I didn't like the way it uh, it looked. Not I'm not talking about the color correction, all that shit. Like I, on my TV, it was not clear. The episode was not crisp. Um, I felt like I was watching something in standard definition. I I have very little experience with HD and 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 like video editing and stuff. I do have experience in it. It's very little though. So I I my gut is that it's not the cameras. I, I really think it's we've talked about this before. I think I think it's the exporting because um you know exporting an HD file takes I mean for a two hour episode probably takes days. Yeah. Um, it probably takes at least a day. I'm, I'm no, it's no probably multiple days. I just feel they're like, oh, we can't, we don't have that time, which is weird because the the show is edited so like co- the same exact way every time. Like it, it mm-hmm. like I don't know, I don't know. I I didn't think it looked good. I'll, I'll just say that. Um, just as far as just wasn't like crisp. But um, let's let's get into this episode. I thought it was. A good one. I thought it was very easy to consume. Like it was one of those episodes that went by pretty quickly for me. Uh, the main event showed up before I knew it. You know, so I'm not saying everything on the show was amazing, but it was just it was easy to consume, which which I view as a good episode when it's like that. All right, let's do it. Let's get into it without further ado. So, The Road to Slam Anniversary continues on an all-new episode of Impact on Access TV. We started with Laredo Kid versus Mike Bailey in an Ultimate X qualifying match. Of course, crazy flippy dippy here from beginning to end. Uh, Mike Bailey hit a pinpoint kick to the head and trapped Laredo Kid in a pinning predicament to score the victory. Laredo Kid gets the win over Mike Bailey, and so Laredo Kid is in the X Division, uh, is in the Ultimate X match at Slam Anniversary. Um, and then Mike the Bailey side. won this match. Didn't he roll him up? No, nah, it says Laredo Kid got the win. Actually, you know what? That doesn't sound that is right. Interesting, because I'm because yeah, because Ace Austin cut a promo after this, telling Mike Bailey he was gonna get his comeuppance for for what he did. Yeah. Oh Which no. Was- okay. No, no. You know what? They had it backwards. They had it backwards. Mike Bailey did hit a pinpoint kick to the head and trap Laredo Kid in a pinning predicament to score the victory. But it says below, I'm reading what's on impact.com. It says Laredo <laughs> Kid defeat Mike Bailey. <laughs> Yo, tell me more about Impact's digital digital strategy. Okay, tell me more about how yeah. they're already good with that. Because I'm negative. Um, all right. <laughs> From the site of the best of the Super Juniors tournament in Japan. X Division champion Ace Austin addresses Mike Bailey and Kenny King, who have qualified for the Ultimate X at Slammiversary. Austin says that as long as he's here, there is only second place. Digital media champion Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green check in from their honeymoon. Cardona questions why Rich Swan challenged him for the digital media title. Let me let me let me cut you off so we can talk about this real quick with the opening match. So first of all, match was a lot of fun. Very like. I thought it was very like classic X division. So I enjoyed watching it. The, um, did they communicate it? any? so I didn't watch last week's episode because I was out of town. I do want to watch it because I want to see the Kenny King and Chris Bay. I want to see um, Alicia and uh, Giselle team together. So I still, I, I want to see the episode. I just have it. Did they communicate at all? Um, whether it was last week or that if I miss it, this episode that this was for a qualifier for the ultimate X, because I only heard at the very end when, when uh, I think Laredo Kid was going for a, a pin and Tom was like, to go to Slam first for Ultimate X. And I'm like, again, because I didn't watch last week. I didn't know it was a qualifying match. Like, I had no clue. It was communicated at some point because I definitely knew it was a, a Ultimate X qualifier. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And, I, and I, I've unfollowed all their social media, dude. I'm, there we go. I mean, I have, I have a lot of the um, listeners and stuff message me. Uh, the news and all that because I just I can't do it. I can only see Steiner math so many times on Twitter. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I I just value my news feeds, man, on any social media, dude. So, um, this 
I don't know, man. I, I, clearly, I'm just splitting hairs here because that's what I do. But Ace, I mean, are we supposed to believe Ace Austin was checking in live from Japan that had like a 14 hour time difference or, or something crazy? I mean, like, the, the I mean, minute not... the match was over, the, the minute the match was over, like they got a, a right. video from, you know, Ace Austin. I mean, I'm not like, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stuck on that one. I'm not, I'm not stuck on that one because like, for me, for me, it's more of like, um, you know, like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not like, I'm not stuck on the whole time difference thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, uh, it's, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, uh, to me, I don't really feel like they're pretending that maybe they are. But I just don't think about it that deeply. Like, maybe they are pretending that he was actually watching it live. But, like, I don't know. I just don't, like, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think that deeply into it. Like, to me, it's like, okay, yes, I get it. But, uh. I like, listen like, to so like, much. Uh, yeah. I listen to so much Jim Cornette now, man. Like, that's just something he would point <laughs> out, so. And he's not wrong. And you're not wrong. Like, yeah. if you really think about it. You're like, yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. But I just don't think about it. That's what it is. I just don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. I choose to ignore it. I'm I'm willfully ignorant. I guess just because I've been deployed so many times and I've had like 12, 13, 14 hour time differences, you feel like you're in a completely different planet than the people in the United States, let alone know what they're doing at that exact moment. Like, so that's why I guess it stood out to me because I'm just like. Right. <laughs> you know, we're watching Best of Super Juniors at 3 a.m. here and shit like that, but but he's watching Impact with us, right? <laughs> so, um, oh man! So yeah, continue about uh, you know with Cardona and all that. All right, so uh, digital media champion Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green check in from their honeymoon. Cardona questions why Rich Swan challenged him for the digital media t- digital media title when he's not even in the United States and says that he hasn't earned an opportunity. Meanwhile, Green declares victory in the first ever Queen of the Mountain match at Slammiversary, but says she won't be watching tonight's six knockouts tag. All right. Um, knockouts champion Tasha Steeles, Savannah Evans, and Deanna Perrazzo versus AAA Raina Duranis champion Taya Valkyrie, Mia Yim, and Jordan Grace. Uh, momentum is up for grabs. That's what's on the line here. Momentum. As Mia Yim makes her impact in-ring return, champions square off in the opening moments as Valkyrie hits a modified blue thunder bomb on Tasha Steels. Grace continues the assault with a delayed vertical jackhammer. Evans baits Valkyrie and Yim into the ring, causing a distraction, which allows Evans to blindside Grace. Moments later, Grace hits a swinging slam on Steels to create separation. Yim enters the match with a burst of speed and plants steals with a sit-down powerbomb. And then she, like, twerked on her. It was funny. Uh, <laughs> the match begins to break down as everyone gets involved. Valkyrie hits pandemonium on Evans, followed by eat defeat from Mia Yim to score the victory. So the good guys get the win. What would you think? Did you have any thoughts on this one? I love eat defeat. Like, that. I, I've always loved that move from Gail Kim. Um, yeah. Mia Yim doesn't do it as smooth. Like, it wasn't, you know. But uh, I liked her doing it, especially because I really had no interest in another pile driver in Impact. So um, <laughs> I hope she, um, com- you know, continues to use that. I I kind of wrote down here. This is a very like star-studded match. Like you see a match like this, and you're like, you know, Diana comes out, and Mia, and Taya, and and, and um, you know, uh, uh, Tasha Steeles, and it's like, man, they've they've got some girls on this roster, man. Like. You know, sometimes it takes seeing them all out there at the same time. We're just like, yo, they, they got, they have a lot of people who could work a knockouts title picture right now, uh, where a year ago they didn't. It was just like, oh my God, who are they, who are they going to shoehorn into this just to have a challenger, you know? Um, so, so I enjoyed the match. One thing I kind of picked up on Mia Yim gets the final entrance in a match with two world champions. So they have established like she's the biggest name in this match in our eyes uh because she's freshest from wwe so that's it. <laughs> the way i mean this is still jade at the end of the day you know what i'm saying like um you didn't treat her like that i mean they were 
building her up. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, uh, I don't remember if I said this last time, but I'll get to my point in a second. But I, I wanted to say I don't remember if I said this last time. Um, and I know I've said similar things before. It is so clear when someone comes from the performance center, man, that they are just they have a a a, a polish about them that you know, especially like her. We saw her as Jade. She comes back. She's a completely different person. Her confidence level is just wild, you know. Um, it's off the charts compared to how she was before. And I, you know, I've said before, like I met her in person, like super shy in person. So at least from my, you know, experience with her. So, um, you know, just I think that's actually really interesting because I think that in her case, like I thought she was actually a very good and very polished wrestler. Like when she first went to WWE, one of the things that annoyed me in her first May Young classic was like that they they built that show to put over Shayna Baszler and that just annoyed me because I was like oh they're just putting her over because she's Ronda Rousey's friend and yada 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 but I mean like <clears throat> but to me I was like you know again like uh Mia Yim again I was like Mia Yim is very good you know what I mean like Mia Yim is is very good like I don't like the idea of Mia Yim just kind of putting over uh, Shayna Baszler. You know what I mean? Like, but don't get me wrong, it's wrestling. And by the way, Shayna Baszler has turned out to be very good. So it's not like, it's not that big of a deal. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I just, I, I felt like Mia Yim was already a pretty polished product when she went to WWE. And I feel like she didn't really get that much work while she was in WWE. You know what I mean? Like she was there and they didn't use her a whole bunch. You know what I mean? Because she doesn't look like fucking Mandy Rose. Uh, but um, definitely not. But but I I felt like she almost took like a, a few years of vacation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you know, not to say she didn't do anything. And I don't mean that to be like insulting to the work that she did. They just didn't use her a whole bunch, at least not on TV. OK, so I felt like she's probably relatively fresh coming back to impact. And um. Yeah, I mean, like, I so, so I, I but, but you're, you're, but I'm, but you're right though. You know what I mean? I, I'm sure you are 100% right. Like, I guarantee that the time that you spend at the performance center definitely helps you, you know, with learning how to work certain styles and present more and just, you know, take advantage of your moments more. You know what I mean? Like, that shit drives right. a lot of people crazy, I'm sure. Like, trying your best to come up with a character that is acceptable to these people right who are judging you and uh and and you need their approval to get on tv you know so um so i'm i'm sure that she does get that she has gotten more polished from being uh down at the performance center um but I, but to me i think that's like just a little bit different than some because i've already saw her as like a really polished product to begin with yeah, I, I agree. She she was really, really good. But I mean, if you just look at her entrance compared to like her entrance before, just, you know. Um, you know what I thought about when I saw that entrance? I was like, how long is Impact going to pay for these backup dances? Oh, dude, I thought that the first time she came out, I was like, there's no way this lasts more than a couple episodes. <laughs> right. Which is like, why even do it? Like, if it's a if it's a pay-per-view or something, do that right? Do it, do it, save it for like a pay-per-view and like make it cool. Like, but like dog, like y'all know good and damn well, y'all not to be out, you're not about to be out here just, you know, having paying for extras for her. Like y'all barely have any squash matches, right? Like y'all don't pay for extras on the regular period. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, you use know, one of your own people as a phony doctor, right? <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? That we've already seen on screen. So we know he's not. So, <laughs> It reminded me of Sha uh, Shaq with the Jabberwockies at the All Star Game that one year. Yeah, which was out. cool. It's a yeah. really cool look. I like it. But uh, you know, again, I think it's just you know from habit of you know of 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 being an Impact fan, you just feel like it's not going to last very long. So yeah, yeah, because like the Undead's bridesmaids, those were just local girls. You know, like right. I went to a show in Chicago one time, and uh, Sue Young was wrestling against Paige's mom. Uh, uh, whatever you know, her name is, Soraya or whatever, Soriasis. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the undead bridemaids came out. And I recognize them as local wrestlers from Chicago. You know what I mean? Like I could just right. tell because I was close to them. But you know, you can just bring in local talent to do that. Like you can't. What you, 
can't put a casting call out for local dancers every time you go somewhere. So th- this isn't going to last. There's no way in hell. Right. Um, but the the point I, w- I wanted to make is she was the last entrant. Um, I know exactly how this match is going to end at Slammiversary. Uh, she is she is going... Let's see, this is King of the Mount, so you got to hang the title, right? Anyway, she is going to appear to be winning the match, and Deanna Perrazzo is going to screw her win the title back because Deanna's going to win the title back. I'm mm-hmm. very confident in saying that. I could be wrong, of course. I'm not 100%. I'm very confident in saying, you know, there's certain wrestlers who you 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 have a small period of time where they don't have a belt, but they're going to need one back at some point, like pretty soon, you know. You can't keep it off them too long. Um, and she lost her other titles. Like, she's going to win it back. Deon- I, I, well, one thing I know is Tasha Steeles is not leaving with that belt. That That I can bet my nuts on. But um, <laughs> but but I I'm very confident in saying that Mia Yim is going to appear to win because most of these matches end very similar. She's going to appear to win the match, but Deanna Prazo is going to get one up on her. She's going to win the match, and then they're going to set up Deanna versus Mia with Yim versus Slammiversary. I mean, uh, Bound for Glory. Uh, it feels that way. Um, but it also feels like they have a really good female roster right now. I think you were mentioning this. But like as the um, as you know that match was ending and all the baby faces were kind of standing there, you know, with their hands raised up, I my first thought was like, man, this is a really good women's roster right now. Yeah, I was like, dog, like they, they, there's some good matches here. Like they got to figure out, you know, how to get some good action out of this, man. I think, you know, Impact needs to just really make a commitment to. Um, to, to pushing what they want this knockouts division to be. Um, because I just, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I just, like, they got a lot of talent there, a lot of talent there on the women's roster right now. And if they want to, they can, through this group, they can put together some bangers, man. They can put together yeah. some banger matches, like do it tournament style, like, just, you know, give them time, man. Give them time to do the character work. And, like, for as much as Impact has put it out there that they think they have the best women's roster, like, well, now you have a shot to make that claim. Yeah, you can like, prove it now. You know, but between me and Yim and Taya and Jordan and Deanna, like, you got a chance, man, to have, like, just those four women that I just named out there putting on some great matches with all the people. And by the way, like, I feel like we haven't really seen it enough, but Tanel Dashwood can freaking work, dog. She can work. And I think that, like, maybe she hasn't um, gotten that much of a feature spot, so she hasn't, like, felt invested enough in it. But I still remember when she switched to being, like, evil Emma in her her in her last-ditch run in WWE, and I was like, dog, this is so incredible. Good. This is so good. And so, I mean, look, man, they got a shot. It's just all about what they want to do. It's all about what they want to do. And I mean, like, I don't know. You got to commit to doing something with the tag team titles or get rid of them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, commit, make, make, you got to have three to four teams rotating at a time and like really, you know, be out there having matches you know, where there's some credible stories going on about who's contending for the title. Otherwise, dissolve the tag team thing and just focus on having like individual, good individual knockouts matches because they got the people to do it, man. They got the people to do it. I think like this can be like there, there's there's certain pictures that float around that you'll see where like after a pay-per-view, all the knockouts will get together and like take a picture. And there's like, snapshots of like different eras of the knockouts you know what i mean like you'll see there's like where where there there was a good one i saw on allison k's page where it was just like you know all the knockouts who were there at this one particular time i was like oh man i was just like that was a really good group and then you see like another good group and it's like you know you'll have like these good groups of knockouts at a certain time and right now they got a chance you know with this group they have right here to just be putting on some bangers so uh, ball is in your court impact, but I'm here for it. I, I think I'm, they have to avoid the temptation. Um, I understand what the queen of the mountain match, but I think they have to avoid the temptation of like, okay, bound for glory is going to roll around. So we're going to find a way to have a, a freaking six pack knockout match, five way, 
um fuck fest you know, i'm sorry i should not use that using the females <laughs> but uh <laughs> they have to fight, to fight that urge because the roster now is so deep and talented like this is that opportunity now like what individual feuds can we create from this not not make everything about the title like what what feuds can we really put together here um that that don't have to do with the knockouts championship like you know that's why i got really excited for a second lady frost and giselle shaw had something going and they were at the bottom of the roster and on all honesty but it's like we get so little that feuds they don't have to do with the belt or isn't part of the undead realm you know right right and by the way like i think they have an opportunity now to break up uh lady frost and giselle shaw and have them work with rosemary work with havoc work with Tennille, work with Madison and like get some good matches on the books. Like to me, I look at both of them. Like I've never, I I had never seen either of them before. So I look at them like they're rookies, but very talented. And, and by putting them two together, like when they first get in the door, I'm like, who am I supposed to root for? I don't know either of these people. You know what I mean? I, I don't know either of these people, but yo, I love some of the stuff Lady Frost does. Um, you know, like Giselle saw, she looks like she can do some stuff. And so like, again they should always be building towards the future right so like while they have these rosters right like lady frost and giselle shaw should be building up to a big match with one of your big names right with a with a a, a, a mia yim or with a taya you know what i mean so like but again it's all about like if you want them to be enhancement talents because with, when you have new talent like that they can very quickly become irrelevant or somebody to watch based on what you do with them. And they're still in that phase right now where we're trying to decide if they're irrelevant or somebody to watch. And so I don't know, man, like to me, it just, it makes sense. All you gotta do is put in the time, give them the TV time, give them the match time, let us see them promote them. And so we can grow to like them. Like you got a new talent that like, you know, this is, it's like in the NFL, right? You want to win while you have your quarterback on his rookie contract, right? Like, um, Giselle Shaw and, and Lady Frost presumably presumably are on their rookie contracts, right? Right. Like right. They, they're not commanding a big deal. So now is the time to build them up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Build them up. So, you know, I so again, I think they got a great chance right now with a mix of vets, people we know, and people we're getting to know to do something real special with the knockouts. Clip that off and circulate it. Let's go. Let's go, knockouts. <laughs> All right, so it's time for another edition of Locker Room Talk uh, with the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions. The influence, Tennille Dashwood and Madison Rain reflect on their victory over Giselle Shaw and Alicia last week when they're joined by their co-host, Johnny Swinger, and his new protege, Zicky Dice. Moments later, Rosemary and Havoc interrupt and remind the influence that they've never beaten them for the Knockouts World Tag Team titles. The battle of the futures is now as Chris Sabin challenges Frankie Kazarian to a match next Thursdays. Uh, Let me say about locker room talk, man. Um, First of all, they keep doing this horrible editing when you put the logo right over her face. Um, And Johnny Swinger and his little WrestleMania three or four ring is hilarious. I I Uh, love that. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, my God. I don't know where he keeps coming up with this stuff, dude. Like especially if you're closer to our age, like you can really appreciate some of the shit. He's, <laughs> I remember I used to hate this dude and now, now he's so fucking funny to me, but um, I wanted to say about swingers dungeon real quick. I felt at first they implied it was a sex dungeon, but didn't really, it seemed like <laughs> swinger didn't know it was right, you know, right. now they just leaned into it. Like that's what it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Um, no, 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 let's, let's stay here, let's stay here. Okay, okay. Because I totally said the same thing. Like, at first, there was, like, a light insinuation that there was, like, a double entendre here of the Swingers Dungeon name, but they leaned all the way in on it, and I, just, I thought it was just so funny. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, with the women coming in and out, and, like, you understood why Zicky Dice wanted to get back in there so badly. yeah. Um, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious, man. Like just good stuff with the swingers dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I want to say real quick with decay, like 
they both lost to Tasha mm-hmm. Steeles. And now they're just like, hey, we're the girls who don't beat anybody. Um, I think Rosemary should be in the freaking Queen of the Mountain match, personally. But, yeah, you know, if they're former champions, I'm like, come on, dude. But they both lost to the same person. And now they're like, hey, we want um, we want title shots because we, we earned them. We haven't won a match in three months. Um, but we want title shots. Right. And then they want Havoc to go fight. We'll, we'll get into this, too. We'll, we'll get into that. But I, yeah. I, I think their decay is in a really tough spot, man. Someone told me the other day when I, when I said my son was saying that Under the Realm was cheesy. He's like, well, it's supposed to be cheesy. I'm like, but how does that benefit them? How does that benefit the show that they're doing some uh, – that decay is corny? Like, right. how does that help them, you know? I don't, that's I don't get that. Point. That's what I'm not understanding. Um, I think that's a great point. That's a great question. You got to ask, like, how does it benefit the show that Decay is corny? I think that, like, uh, right, with Johnny Swinger, right, like, you know what you're going for there. You know what you're going for. <clears throat> you get that it's hokey. You get that it's corny. That's the intention the whole time. But, like, Decay is often presented as though they're supposed to be scary. Right. Right. So like to pop up one day and it's like, no, 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 it's it's supposed to be cheesy. Eh, is it though? Is it? Yeah. Like so like Wrestle House was that was supposed to be cheesy, but everyone was in on the joke. That's the difference. Like this is are they supposed to be scary? I I I don't know. I I, I don't feel like they're supposed to be cheesy. I feel like they're their their impacts trying to get them over as being scary, but they're not. They don't come off that way. Right. It right. just doesn't. You know, it's, it's it's not clicking. But they don't beat anybody, man. Not not a single person in that fac- faction. And there was times where Taurus and Crazy Steve, same thing. We're gonna go both wrestle Carl Anderson one week, both lose. The next time they both wrestle singles matches of Luke Gallows, they lose those. Then they wrestle both wrestle Jonah, they both lose. And now these both these girls are losing to the same girl. Like they dude, I've won more matches this year than they have. So <laughs> um I think the knockouts title they're dude, they're not doing the influence versus decay. I promise you, man. It's gonna be as many women tag teams that they can get into it. Oh my God. That's what I think. Oh Oh my God. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So this was, uh, I, I, I thought this was interesting. Eric Young took a look back on his career in professional wrestling as he prepares to challenge Josh Alexander for the impact title of anniversary. Now I don't, I'm not sure if you saw this, but I thought this was really good. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Eric Young went through basically his whole career, like what story he was doing at each point in his career, uh, in impact. And I thought it was really good. Like, as I mentioned, you know, about the times when I was watching Impact, you know, in, you know, 07, 08, all of that, you know, this was cool, like, to take me back there and, like, you know, see where he is now. I just thought it was, like, it was it was really dope. It was excellent, man. Like, I knew that I had heard Eric Young had this good promo, and I'm like, oh, because he's going to come with the, it's a sickness, and this yeah. and this. <laughs> I mean, I would, dude, I was sure that's what it was going to be, man. Um, this was f- f- great. I mean, like more of this, they know how to build a main event for a pay per view. You know, um, the one they and I said with the Christian and Josh Alexander one, I didn't like that one in particular. It was just them cutting promos back and forth, and then teaming one week and they coexist. Like I thought that was so shit. But other than that, the main events they usually find a way to like make it work. You know, and some people are like, oh, I could do without Eric Young in the main event, but after this. I was just like, yo, they're they're gonna lean into this. This is gonna be like uh, defending the title against Brian Myers because they just needed a champ, uh, a challenger for the the show. You know, they're they're gonna lean into this like it, where they're not gonna make them feel like, hey, we just need a warm body. Um, speaking of which, I bet you Suicide's gonna be in the Ultimate X match. Um, but they weren't just like, hey, we need a warm body. Eric Young, you're up. You know, they, yeah, they look yeah. like they're gonna do something interesting here, story wise. Yeah, yeah. So. And this is going to be the test for Josh Alexander. Cause like I said, with the moose stuff, they made it personal. They brought his wife, his kid, but what happens when all that goes away? How, how is Josh going to connect with the audience and draw sympathy and, and, and continue his momentum outside of just having good wrestling matches? Like this is going to be 
the real test for his uh you know character and all that well so <clears throat> when eric young won the gauntlet for the gold and i saw you know he was going to be the challenger at, at slam anniversary for josh alexander i'm thinking to myself like well what's the story here and i immediately said like okay well maybe they're going to tell the story of you know uh tna's past since it's the 20th anniversary uh versus tna's future and i like that listen this is something that wwe yeah. is good for all the time these quote unquote passing the torch moments and i think if your impact lean all the way into this lean all the way into this by the time we get to slam anniversary the people who watch this show should be convinced that Eric Young is the, the, the greatest thing ever produced by TNA and that he still has a hundred years in the wrestling business to go. And that if Josh Alexander doesn't win this match, his career is a fluke and he's ruined. Like that's what you need to convince all of us as, of leading into this match. Like again, WWE does this all the time. John Cena versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. You know, they're planning, uh, it's rumored they're planning The Rock versus Roman Reigns for next year's WrestleMania. Like, there's no doubt or any question who was going to win either of those matches, but they do a great job of selling it. Like, yo, you have all this history with this person and this is the person who's going to take us into the future, but they can't take us into the future unless they get past this um this icon of of yesteryear and this person is so important that to the history of this company and so critical to the company going forward that they're just here to hold down this person who's trying to take over and so i think there is totally totally a chance to really sell this main event as a big big deal um again Think Cena versus Reigns. Think Rock versus Reigns. You know, all of that. Like, they just got to, they, they, but again, they got to really, really lean in to this idea of Eric Young's past and all he has accomplished. And when you look at it, he has accomplished a lot. He's been with, you know, TNA Impact through all the eras. And, uh, and, 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 you know, really, like, he really has. And so, honestly, like, there's a great story to tell here, like, there is not a, a, a better person you could say is carrying the flag for the previous, the first 20 years of impact other than Eric Young. You know, I know they love AJ Styles and, and they'd, ha they'd take him in a second if they could, but Eric Young was there longer than AJ. When AJ was gone in 2013, 2014, Eric Young was still there. And Eric Young left in, what was that, 2015, 2016? Mm -hmm. But, and he yeah, was, you know, going for a couple of years and then he was back. But like, no, no, Eric Young is that, he's the dude. He's the dude. Like, if you look at it, he is the guy. All the eras, he's been there. All the titles, he's had them. You know, like, Eric Young is the guy, man. He's the guy. And so I just hope they lean into this, the, to this story, shine Eric Young up real nice, okay? <laughs> um, and, and again, for all the people who watch Impact, who are old heads who remember the glory days and who are hoping for yada, yada, yada. Like we should all be looking at Eric young, like, Oh man, like, nah, man. Like, you know, we want to see if you still got it. We think you still got it. Like, I think there's a great story to be told here. There really is. Um, but they got to do it. Like I said, they got to lean all the way into it. You know, don't do it a little bit. And the other half of this is they have to really lean into this idea that Josh Alexander is the flag bearer going forward. It's tough because that's not a very baby face thing to do, right? It's not very baby face to say, I'm the face of the company taking you forward, but they got to really lean into that. They got to really lean into that concept that he's trying to build a legacy and that Eric Young is standing in the way of that. So I, I listen, Eric Young has violent by design at his disposal, disposal and he should be running roughshod over this whole roster and again, leaning heavily on the memories and, you know, really looking like he's putting Josh Alexander's uh, build in, in danger. Yeah. And, and everything you're saying about Eric Young is so true. And he's always spoken 
fondly of the company. Like these are these are the kind of guys you want to, you know, really lean into. Like AJ Styles will have nothing good to say about TNA to this day, you know. And but they'll still play his fucking clips, man. They'll play Samoa Joe. Like he don't got nothing good to say, man. Like Eric Young, they gotta they really have to show him his respect in this run. Like, um, you know, he's not gonna win, but you know, pay pay your respects to this guy. Make him look credible. Uh, get him some good TV wins. Don't have him get knocked on his ass every episode um, by Josh or something like that. Like, you know, do something special here. So I, I, I hope so, man. But he's always spoken fondly. He's a good representation uh, of the company far better than, you know, AJ and all these dudes. Right. Totally agree. Totally agree. All right. So we had the OGK, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, Bennett with Maria Canellis versus the Good Brothers. The war between Honor No More and Bullet Club rages on as Maria Canellis joins Tom Hannafin and Matthew Raywald on commentary for this tag team grudge match. Gallows takes Taven off his feet with a thunderous running clothesline. Bennett makes the makes the blind tag, allowing him and Taven to hit Anderson with a flapjack on the ropes. Bennett adds insult to injury as he runs the ropes only to deliver a closed fist to the face of Anderson. Moments later, Anderson hits a spine buster on Bennett to create separation and make the tag to Gallows. The pace quickens as Gallows goes on the attack, hitting Taven with a pump handle slam. Taven comes back with a springboard moonsault on Gallows for two. Bennett inadvertently super kicks his own partner, allowing the Good Brothers to connect with a double team suplex. Anderson goes for the pin, but Canellis leaves commentary and provides the distraction on the apron. Anderson sidesteps the incoming Bennett causing him to spear his own wife. <laughs> Anderson <laughs> takes him out on the <laughs> takes him out with the stun gun for three. The Good Brothers defeat the OGK. What did you think about this? Oh, I was just so excited to see a, a spear and a cutter. Um, <laughs> what, what I don't understand uh, in wrestling, like when Maria took the, the, the spear, like, why do they always act like they're out cold? Like, I, I would think like you would sell the move, like you're just holding onto your stomach. Like that would be so much more impactful right. if she was like looking like she was gasping for air or something like that. Like, but then you take a spear and you're just out, you know, mm. like, and then he's not even like leaning over her trying to pick her up. He's just like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm trying to win I, this I, match. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was just so weird, man. Um, but they're leaning into, uh, you know, you you bring this up about AEW a lot of the time that they bring in these storylines from New Japan, like everyone's supposed to be in on what the hell was going on, but they don't give any backstory. And there's a backstory with Maria Kanellis and Mike Bennett and, and Carl Anderson from Japan, but they haven't really, I think they might have touched on it a little, but it's like they're kind of leaning into a joke from 2013, you know, man, that... Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, they got a little history, um, but I don't know. I, I want this to be done, man. I was interested in the in the honor no more Bullet Club stuff, mm -hmm. but it's not good. Uh, so I just want it to be done. Um, I don't want to see them fight anymore. Even even uh, I don't know if it was Tom or Matt was just like, why? They even brought up like, isn't this feud over? You know, they honor no more won <laughs> at the at the pay per view, yeah. like you know. It's just like beating a dead horse. When I saw the match graphic for this, I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, I'm done. I mean, it's not like it was the longest feud or anything, but it just, I didn't think it was good. So I, I was, I expected it to be like interesting and it just wasn't for me. Um, right. Maybe for a lot of others it was or it is, but I think I'm just so disappointed in Honor No More. Not in them, but just, I thought they were going to be one of the better parts of the show. Uh, just like I said about the major players <laughs> who have right. not been on TV. So um, I think I have high expectations for certain things sometimes, and then it just doesn't deliver. And I'm like, uh. yeah. So I yeah. just, I just feel like they're going to keep wrestling after this. That's what's driving me crazy. Like, right. We I don't feel like it's over. Like, some sort of like real stakes, you know, to make it feel more important. Um, or it, it does not have to be like a title, but just like some sort of story that makes it feel more important. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah. I, dude, I can see him doing a, like a loser leaves impact shit to get the rid of the honor no more guys. Yeah, I mean, like initially, there's that, you know, that that um, that that new that new talent smell. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just this idea that like these people are new here. And this is fun because they're here. We haven't seen these guys and I want to see what they could do. Right. So, I mean, there's that, right. But like, I don't know. I just feel like you gotta, at some point you gotta do more. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta do more. You gotta, you gotta do something to make the story interesting. You gotta offer me some sort of stakes here. Right. Absolutely. All right. So after returning from injury at Under Siege, the vengeful Sammy Callahan vows to make Moose's life a living hell. Uh, Masha Slamovich takes on Shauna Reed. This was, you know, this was quick work as usual. Masha Slamovich with the squash. Uh, she calls it the snowplow to pick up another impressive victory. This probably lasted two minutes. Uh, I don't know that she calls it that because that's Al Snow's finisher. So that's why he's well, calling Well, do you it. think Al Snow could beat Masha Slamovich today? Probably not, right? No, no. But <laughs> I'm just saying, Tom is usually really good about knowing the names of the finishers and all that stuff. But like, and Josh Matthews used to just use the WWE name, you know? Yeah. I don't want Tom to start going that route. Like, I don't think she calls it the snowplow, dude. Like, I have a hard time believing that, you know. <laughs> She's Al like, why is that be the snowplow? Because I'm Russian? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so after the match, Havoc comes to the ring to confront Slamovich in the middle of the ring, wanting to prove herself following her loss to Tasha Steeles at Under Siege. So we got a, a tease of Slamovich versus Havoc. What do you think about that? I'm glad to see them do um, to see Masha do something. I thought her first big feud was going to be with Jordan personally. Um, I mean, as of a few weeks ago, I saw that. I thought that before Jordan came out and and uh, took out the major players unnecessarily. So I, I'm looking forward to see. I, I'm looking forward to see um, how they do this. Um, I think we're in a weird place because Havoc can't lose. Well, I shouldn't say that they lose every week, but really, Havoc can't take this loss. They're trying to say. Rosemary and Havoc want to fight for the tag team titles. So Havoc can't lose, but Masha can't lose either. So mm -hmm. I really think we're getting a fucked finish, um, which is going to be disappointing for me because for Masha, we want to see, you know, all these squash matches culminate to a good match. I think uh, it's going to get interrupted by the influence mm -hmm. and there's going to be some sort of, build to the you know like a multi-team match right with the pay-per-view that's what i right. think I, I i don't know but I'm, I'm looking forward to it i'm just not optimistic on the finish uh yeah i mean like again you know they got these good uh you know they got these good women you know what i mean like they gotta just find somebody to put on some fun matches uh some fun story even if it's like wacky stuff like again just lean in and make it fun just lean in and make yeah. it fun like just you know i think that was one of the things that i really enjoyed about the um the tna when i first started watching was like it did feel like they were trying to do something like different and out of the box like mm -hmm. it, it it felt different it looked different like little stuff like again the six-sided ring it was like okay we're just trying to be different you know what I mean? We're somehow, some way trying to be different. And like, yeah, man, like, I think that's what creates the best experience for the fans. So, yeah, that's what I was saying in the beginning, of, even about the wrestlers coming in and wanting to be a part of something special and different, not just come wrestle for a company. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. So let's see. We saw W. Morrissey and Bupinder Gajar. Uh, form an alliance after Raj Singh and Shira were kind of getting in Bupinder's face and Bupinder was like hey let's settle this and uh, Morrissey basically came and was like hey I got your back so it looks like we're going to get a little alliance here between Morrissey and Gujar do you think this is going to be a real alliance or do you think this is going to be some big setup 
where they're all going to jump Morrissey. And it'll be Morrissey versus the Indians. That would be interesting, actually. Um, because you got to find something long term for Morrissey. Racist. I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean interesting because I mean interesting in the sense that Mupinder <laughs> has been pushed as this baby face who the fans seem to yeah. like. Right. Um, I couldn't understand a word in, for the first like 75% of this promo, <laughs> though, I got to say, this segment. Um, and, uh, but I'm I'm interested. I'm 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 strangely intrigued. At first, I was just like, ah, oh, here we go with these three. But then, uh, when Morrissey came in the picture, I was like very intrigued. And then I couldn't believe how bigger Morrissey was than these guys. And these are big dudes. Mm-hmm. I was like shocked. Yeah. And the funny thing is, Morrissey isn't even really seven feet. Like he's like six eight. Yeah. They, they say he's seven. Which is feet, still very which tall. Is really big. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, like. If we knew he was seven feet tall, of course he would be towering them, but he's he's really not. But he's still huge, so it just he's just a big dude, man. Right. <laughs> he's a big ass dude. Also, uh, wrestlers in general are so much shorter than we we realize, man. When I go to these uh conferences, um, you know, I'm I'm five nine, you know, maybe yeah. five nine on a and a half on a good day. Uh, and I'm I'm taller than a lot of these guys, dude. Right. So, I mean, it, it's pretty crazy. They look so much bigger on TV. Um, you know, Josh Alexander's one, man. Like, I thought this dude was like 6'4 or something like that. Like, he's not even close. He's not 5'9", yeah. but, you know. Um, so, anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, there's, this, there's um, like, the header on the Impact page is, like, him standing across from Eric Young, and he's, like, an inch or two taller than Eric Young. You're right. Who doesn't look like a tall dude? <laughs> exactly. And uh I, I pointed it out when he was feuding with Christian because Christian is about six four. Right. So that there that's when it was just like, no, he's not that I think he's about six three, but he's 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 between six three, six four. And he was towering Josh. So it was just like, man, he looks like he's really tall, but I mean he's still above average height, man, but it's just I don't know, like right. Yeah, I, I was very shocked when they were face to face and they were so close in height. Yeah, <laughs> it was like when Darby yeah. Allen was uh, uh, going eye to eye with MJF that one time, and it was just like, oh my god, they're the same height. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like you. Yeah. That is hilarious. You're... But you know what? But like now that you mentioned it, like I don't, I never thought of MJF as tall. You know what I mean? Like, but I think like the the fact that he's short just like adds to his you know, his heelishness. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yo, who are you to be talking to people like this? Like, you are so <laughs> tiny of a human. Like, how dare you? Uh, but, you know, it's, it's funny, but yeah, that's the magic of TV. You know what I mean? It's the magic yeah. of TV. So, you know, <laughs> whatever. What you gonna do? <laughs> um, all right, so we have the Impact World Tag Team Champions putting the titles on the line as the Briscoes defend their titles against the team they dethroned at Under Siege, Violent by Design. Mark launches himself off the apron, hitting Diener with a neck breaker on the floor in the ring. During regains control with a massive crossbody to Jay. Diener distracts the referee, allowing Young to illegally attack Jay from the outside. Jay uses his quickness to break free of the assault and make the tag to Mark. The pace quickens as Mark sends Doring to the floor with an enziguri. Mark soars through the air, colliding with Doring on the outside. The, br- the Briscoes hit Diener with a double team power bomb for a very close near fall. Violet by design isolates Jay as Diener connects with a top rope headbutt for two while Doring tussles with Mark on the top rope. Jay rolls up Diener to score the three count. <sighs> Briscoes defeat Violet by design. After the bell, Eric Young joins Doring and Diener in a three on two assault on the Briscoes until Impact World Champion Josh Alexander makes the save. Alexander goes face to face with Young, but is blindsided by Diener and Doring. The Briscoes re enter the fray as they assist Alexander in clearing the ring. Josh Alexander and the Briscoes stand tall as Impact goes off the air. So it looks like we know what we're getting soon, sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, you know, the 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 Briscoes and Josh Alexander versus Violent by Design, which, by the way, Violent by Design should win, right? What you need is for me to think that Eric Young has a shot at winning the world title at 
Slammiversary, right? Yeah, but you're talking about the tag team champions and world champion on the same team. Now, if it was the heels, th- they'll lose. You can put uh, five champions on one side and they'll lose. But with the baby faces, I don't know. Uh, I don't see violent by design beating them. I think the match will be cool. I'm kind of actually kind of looking forward to it, but I'm laughing because um, I think Impact does its best work with, in the main event when the two guys don't touch until the pay per view. I agree. They've, they've done some good stuff. Do the Austin Aries and uh, Moose feud several yeah. years ago, where like this is back when Moose was kind of like a baby face and wasn't that interesting, and they forced mm-hmm. him into the main event, and people were yeah. like didn't really want to see it, which is odd. Like comp- think of about Moose now, like back then people were like, what a fucking lame main event. Right. <laughs> and they never touched. And, and they had, they found this way to make like these promo packages and, and just make it yeah. so, where you just anticipated the damn match. Like it was yep. great, you know? So there's times where they, they find, they find the magic to build a, a match like that. And then the, you got, you know, the Moose Morrissey and Cardona, triple threat where these motherfuckers are fighting every week. Right. And it's just like, all right, we've seen them fight a thousand times already. And now they're going to fight at the pay-per-view. Okay. So I don't want them to go this direction with Eric young, man. Like they, I I, I think with this promo, Eric young cut, if we get more of that, um, I think it'll make things interesting. But if they're just like, we're just going to have them fight every week and, one week Eric Young's gonna be standing tall, and the next Josh, it's like, dude, I, I don't want to see them see them yeah. do all that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I totally agree. So, all right, now let me say real quick. Let me say, oh, I, uh, I, I I had to pay attention to this for you when Josh Alexander's music hit. I had to rewind it like two or three times. Uh-huh. No pop because people didn't know who was coming out. I won't say it was dead. That's not. I'm not gonna say that. But it took, you know, the ominous. Dawn, and then people had to turn around and, oh, who's coming? And then they see Josh. Oh, you know what I'm saying? But we're always mm-hmm. talking about that music. Like, it has to have something that just hits and you're like, yeah, you know, like if Eddie I Edwards' agree. music played, I'm, you know, I'm taking back, you know, people, whoa, you know. But yeah, I had to watch the reaction and everyone had to turn around like, oh, who's coming? Like, right. no, no, no hands went up, nothing. And then when they saw right. him, you could see, you know, people react. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, they got to figure out something to, you know, to produce that entrance a little better, man. Like, again, you know, people just react to what you show them. And if you just, if you don't show them anything to get excited about, then they're not going to get excited. Like, we like Josh Alexander, man. He's good. He, he cuts great promos. He can wrestle good. But, like, you can produce that entrance to be more exciting. You can. It just doesn't, you know, again, like it just, you can do something like it's just the music is so basic and he himself doesn't do much to his entrance to make it more exciting. Like he just walks out, fixes his headgear and gets in the ring. And I'm like, okay. If you you were going to create a wrestler on a video game, like you wouldn't do an entrance like that. If you were lazy and you just wanted to get done with it, you would. Yeah, <laughs> like, but usually, like when like, you create, I don't feel like spending time to think about this, think about music, or think about like all this other stuff. Then yes, you would do that if you just want right. You would just be like, I just need a a jobber or someone steps, you know, uh, real quick. Let me create a quick wrestler. He's gonna come out and do this. Um, yes, and that's it. Yes, you know exactly. Just yeah, you know, it's like Steve Macklin's entrance. You know, they added the the machine guns and the lights like that's great and know? that's the t- and, and see so to me right that's like the opposite of josh alexander right so josh alexander has all the tools all the tools and no entrance and and steve macklin now he has a good entrance we disagree <laughs> on steve macklin because i think he's great but <laughs> So I mean, like, yeah, man. I think, like, you know, it's is uh, they there's definitely room for improvement with Josh Alexander's interest, man. Like, just they're leaving yeah. they're leaving reaction on the table. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, all right. Now, listen, we're gonna do something. Now, we're gonna introduce a new segment into the game into the show. We're gonna play the classic family game, F Mary Kill, and <laughs> so. 
what we're going to do is we're going to go we're, from this episode and you're going to tell me what you would F, what you would marry and what you would kill. So what you would F would be the thing that's, that's exciting to you. You know what I mean? The thing that's exciting to you that you enjoy that gave you the buzz right away. Uh, what you would marry would be like the thing you want to keep, you know, you want to see more of, you want to keep around long-term and what you would kill would be like, get that shit out of here. Not feeling it. You know what I mean? And you can play along too in the comments. You can tell us what you would F marry and kill from this episode. So, all right, BQ, you're up first. Tell me from this episode, what are you going to F? What are you going to marry? And what are you going to kill? Do you, do you want some time uh, to think about it? You want me to go uh, first? No, 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 I got it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to F, uh, Chris Saban versus Frankie Kazarian next week. <laughs> so the the reason I say that, um, I think it's going to be a really cool match that's going to lead towards machine gun, machine guns against uh, uh, Christopher Daniels and Chris Kazarian. That's what I think is going to happen at Slammiversary. So I fucks with that. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Um, I just... I. I Again, I don't like to go full TNA on on stuff. You know what I mean. So I, I, I want him to get there, but I don't want it to. Like they had this weird thing where Chris Saban is beating everyone, and he was in the final two of that. Like, I want them to pump the brakes on Chris Saban because he's not the future. He's a he's a very reliable person who does good in any role you put him in. Like I I always say he's not suicide. He's not a, or P D Williams. We need a warm body to wrestle. Like. Right. He comes in, but he he adds something to it. Right. But um, he's not the future. Like so, do something cool with him. But after that, like, no more beating people on the roster that need wins. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, I, I marry. I will marry the um, the EY stuff because uh, that that video package it was so good, man. I was just like, yo, if we if we I don't know what else they can what else he can say that can continue to be interesting like that. But um, man, it was so well done. This, it, it, it just, yeah. on paper, you're like Josh Alexander versus Eric Young, who cares? And then you see that and you're just like, ah, I get the story now. Like it's, you know, how you said it's a uh, past versus future and all that. Like it makes perfect sense. I didn't think that at the time so much when it happened, I was just kind of like Eric Young. Okay cool you know uh and then the kill for me is uh bullet club versus uh honor no more mm. i'm almost like kill honor no more man they are so uninteresting i mean yo in t- back in tna on pop tv dude maria Canellis and mike bennett like ran the show like they their yeah. segments they took over the show a little too much. They towards felt the like the thing that had the most potential to be like a breakout star going forward. Right. And now they're just people on the roster, man. And then, you know, I, I keep saying about Eddie Edwards, like, what is he? He looks exactly the same. Mm-hmm. I think his colors are a little different. Goofy haircut, backwards hat, same entrance doing this shit. Um, there's almost nothing different about him, you know? Yeah. So it, like, I'm not interested in this, dude. I don't feel like any of these guys are around to stay. Like, I want to see Kenny King stick around, dude. I don't feel like they're here to stay. They keep saying, oh, we're not going anywhere. Like, yes, you are. I'm almost positive you are. Um, so I'm, I'm done with I, – I, I was in love with the potential of it, but I'm, I'm done with it. I can't mm-hmm. see them wrestle again. I, I cannot. Wow, you're that out on it. You're done yeah. with it. Done, 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 done. <laughs> All right. Um, so I am going to I am going to F Mia Yim's push. I'm I'm liking it. What? I'm here for it. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'm, I'm going out. No, 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 no. Oh, like okay. some medium, I felt like was the was the was basically the kind of the star of that knockouts match, and uh, I'm here for it. I, I want to see medium get a nice run, just like you mentioned. I'm I'm looking forward to her taking all that polish that she picked up in the, the WWE system, and you know, and and doing something really cool uh, in the knockouts division. So I'm going to f 
Mia Yim's push here. Uh, Mia Yim. <laughs> what about this about F Mia Yim? That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound right either. So you said push. I, I was like, wait, what did you say? Uh, I'm an F the knockouts match. Uh, F the yeah, knockouts no. match. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna marry. Uh, <laughs> I marry I'm gonna Angela marry Angela. the. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually copy you. I'm gonna marry the the EY story of 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 shining him up as the flag bearer for 20 years of TNA. I love that story. It feels right. It doesn't feel like something that you're stretching to. I know that pie in the sky. They would rather have AJ Styles. But Eric Young is the right person to be doing this because, again, like he's he's never been your feature player, even except for maybe when he was the world champion. But like um, but he feels like the right person to be doing this. So um, so I'm going to I'm going to marry Eric Young, Eric Young's story leading in the slam anniversary. And I'm going to kill. I want to kill the way the impact does their rematches after a title change, they throw them away so fast. Oh, that's one thing that I just want them to do better at. Like you can get eight weeks of television out of a rematch clause. You know what I mean? Give me build to a rematch. Like you can build to a rematch. Why not? You know, like this story there, you can do a whole story. Look at what they did with Deanna and Mickey. They made like three matches last for like five, six months. That was really good. So, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kill uh, Impact throwing away their their rematch, their championship rematches so fast. Um, but yeah, so that's that was that was our first uh, time trying out F Mary Kill. What did you think about that? I thought that was fun. I dig it. I dig it. I look forward to doing that. Let us know what you guys thought about that in the comments. Drop that down below and let us know what you would F marry kill from this episode. I look forward to seeing in the chat what you guys think about that. Uh, BQ, what you, you got any, any final thoughts you want to drop on the people before we go? No, um, just, you know, as I said, good episode. It was easy to consume and that's when it's, that's when I enjoy it. When it's not too much, um, you know, I, I kind of brought up before they run down the whole you know, card for next week and it's long and it's what's going to happen when so-and-so cashes in their rematch club, you know, just, Oh yeah. There's certain things like that, that um, I think waste so much time on the show, but I didn't get that, that stuff. Didn't hold me back this time. Like everything just seemed to, um, to flow. I didn't feel like I was hearing wheel in the night every five seconds. Like, <laughs> I don't remember really hearing it much at all. So um, it just just flowed, man. It was it was it was just over before I knew it. You know, yeah. I didn't feel them wasting time um, like they do, and it just seemed like the segments from one to another just made sense. And you know, it was good. Yeah, no, this uh, is definitely a good episode. So shout out to Impact for that. Uh, shout out to all you people out here watching. Real quick before we go, just a reminder one more time. Again, if you have always wanted to go to Slammiversary, if you are thinking you want to go to Slammiversary this year, I got a chance for you to win some two tickets, two really good tickets to Slammiversary uh, for a price that you probably would never even think you could get a chance to get tickets for just 20 bucks, 20 bucks for a raffle ticket for a chance to win two excellent tickets to slam anniversary uh holla at your boy hit me on twitter at tw talking about hit me on or you hit me at the talking about pod uh page as well um bq tell the people where they can find you on social i am at bq speaks uh should be at negative bq speaks but um <laughs> yeah. BQ speaks on twitter um <laughs> And, and let me throw this out there. I'm letting you know this too. I've got a uh, military duty in the next like five Wednesdays. And that's when we attempt to do the uh, mailbag when we have time. So it's not gonna be a mailbag for a little bit. I'm just gonna. Yeah. But keep on, you know, dropping the questions in the impact lounge engagement group. We're just going to keep storing those up. And when we get a chance, we're just going to come back at you uh, and hit you back with the best of the best. We'll still interact with you uh, on the impact lounge engagement group and in the, the comments of the YouTube chat. So, um, you know, again, you know, 
if you haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, if you really want to help out the show, the best thing you can do is tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the chat for, excuse me, into the show, into the conversation for BQ. I'm TW. Peace.